tired of looking at the world through a keyhole? Because that's what you're doing when you're online. Don't you just want to get out and go somewhere? I know I do. Okay, so here's an idea. How about France next summer? Have you thought about France? No? Well, why not? Here, let me share my screen. France has the best art, the best food, the best wine. No wonder it's the number one travel destination on the planet. And just to illustrate that, look at these two paintings from the Louvre, okay? The one on the right is La Jaconde. No, it's not. You say that's the Mona Lisa by Leonardo. Yeah, well, that's what we call it, the Mona Lisa. But the rest of the world, especially in France, they call it La Jaconde. So when you're in the Louvre, and you'll go there, you need to follow the signs for La Jaconde to see it. Anyway, the one on the left is Anne of Cleves by Hans Holbein the Younger. They're only painted about 35 years apart. They're similar poses, but they tell very different stories. The Mona Lisa is a married woman. She's secure in your position. And if you're a woman in the 16th century, you are not secure in your position unless you were married. Notice that she doesn't wear any jewelry. She doesn't need to. But look at Anne. Anne is dressed in all her finery. She's looking at you directly, being very demure. She's sending a message, okay? You see, Henry VIII sent Holbein to paint Anne because he was thinking of marrying her. So in effect, this portrait is the 16th century version of a social media post. Tinder, if you will. And by the way, Henry did marry Anne. She was his fourth wife, but didn't last long. But I, I, I digress. So why France, you might ask, this is a benchmark for modern culture, whether it's food, clothing, or modern living in many of its forms. People all over the world look to France to take their cues for good living. Why do you think that many of the words for food and we use in food and fine dining are French? Okay, it's because it's the benchmark. So if you're thinking about working in food and agriculture industry, then experiencing these benchmarks could be a real asset for your background understanding, for your career, for your creativity in food and production and marketing. These are things that you would like to learn, then this trip is for you. My name is Tom Fult. I'm a research scientist in Ag and Applied Economics. Part of my job is working with our international programs. And today I want to talk to you about our signature study abroad program, Food and Farm Culture in France. This is our longest running program. In fact, it's the longest running study abroad program on campus. 2021 will be our 34th year. Okay? The program is uh, Ag Economics 4280, Food and Farm Culture in France. It's three credits next summer. In this program, you're going to learn about French food systems. You're going to spend a month in France. No French language skills are required. You live with a host family and classes and field trips and free weekends. And of course you're going to have a heck of a lot of fun. There's also another class, which is next spring, Ag at 4890, Special Topics, Study Abroad Preparation. It's just one credit. But in this, program, in this course, you're going to get uh, background information on French history. You're going to learn a little bit about uh, inter basics of international travel, some of the do's and don'ts, travel tips, money, health issues, and the ever-popular cheese tasting class. Hey, who is this trip for? Well, it's for anyone interested in a broader perspective on food and agriculture. It's for anyone who wants to up their game on food quality. It's for anyone who's interested in international aspects of agriculture and potentially working and studying overseas. It's also for anyone who wants to show potential future employers that you have a global perspective, that you can think outside of the box, and that you're willing to go outside your comfort zone. And it's for anyone who has that spark of adventure but just doesn't know how to light that fire. You haven't had a way to get overseas yet, okay? If you've never traveled, this program is for you. No problem, okay? We can do that. All right, here's a picture. Uh, this is from Rongis, which is a wholesale distribution facility outside of Paris where we go. These are kind of some of these foods that you would normally see in the U.S. In the upper right, that's rabbit. and lower left, that's suckling pig. Okay, what is this trip about? UW is one of eight universities that participate in this program each year. There will be five to ten University pro UW students in a group of about 25 to 30 all together. A UW faculty member will be there the whole time. 2021 is our 34th year for that this trip has been offered in U by UW in conjunction with ESA. That's the École Supérieure d'Agriculture in France, our partners. Here's a group in 2019, 2018. This is a 2018 group right in Paris, of course. The curriculum includes a mixture of understanding the French agricultural system and France's food culture with some history and context thrown in. And that's what I really like about this. It's a really good balance between agriculture and culture. Okay? 
Instruction is a combination of classroom and field trips to egg producers and cutting edge food producers. You'll also learn a little bit of French too. Where does this trip go? We start out with three days in Paris and see some of the major sites. Then it's on to our home base of Angers that's in western France near the city of Nantes. You'll stay with a host family and attend classes. All the classes are in English. Now there will be a basic French class as well. And have two or three field trips a week, plus an extended trip to some chateau in the Loire Valley and a weekend trip to Normandy Coast where we'll see the World War II landings and the American Cemetery and Mont Saint-Michel. Uh, there are two free weekends as well. Here's a picture of the TGV. It gets up to about 125 miles an hour. France has a wonderful travel network. If you want to do any traveling on the weekends, the rails are the way to go. Angers is about the size of Fort Collins, but it doesn't feel that way. There's Castle of the Loire, our one of our uh, one of our weekend trips. Chenonceau will be one of the stops. On the Normandy trip, we'll go to Mont Saint Michel and the American Cemetery and Omaha Beach. Angers has is, is very historic. Its roots go back to prehistoric times. They found uh, stone tools in the place where the castle was built. But it's also a Roman city, and then it was a medieval city, and bits and pieces still exist. Okay. You'll have time to wander around the city and learn a lot more. Like I said, we'll have two or three company visits per week. This includes several vineyards. There will also be a bread baking class and a wine baking and a wine tasting class. Here's one of our company visits in 2019 to an orchard. Okay, costs. Everyone wants to know about costs. I have a resident and non-resident uh, here. I've tried to make these costs as conservative as possible, which means you can probably get away with a little bit less. The, the main thing is the airfare. Uh, airfare could be up to twelve or thousand dollars depending on when you purchase your ticket and what kind of itinerary you have. So you can subtract that a little, but I've tried to be as conservative as possible. So this is the high end, right? There are two major scholarships for this program. College of Agriculture is beyond the classroom grant for college majors and the Cheney Grant for Education Abroad. All right, that's been a really brief look at the program. If you'd like more information, please contact me, Tom Folk, at folk at uwyo.edu. Applications will be through the Education Abroad website. Thank you for watching. Au revoir.